Hey, let's do some dominant seventh uh, chord tone shapes. These are awesome. So uh, the reason they're awesome is because the dominant seventh has kind of a, a rock and roll blues kind of punchy quality. And it's really popular for playing blues and rock and roll and stuff that smells like that. So uh, remember, this is pretty cool. Uh, chord tones are just the notes of a chord played one at a time or maybe two at a time or three but uh, that doesn't matter so simply I'm gonna look at a7 here for a little bit um, a7 the most simple a7 I can think of is middle and ring finger on the second fret of the fourth and th second strings play five strings those are your chord tones but remember those notes are up the neck so that was A, E, G, C sharp, and E. Um, you could vary it like this. Adding the G right there with the pinky. So remember, it's A, C sharp, E, and G. A is the root, C sharp is the third, E is the fifth, G is your flatted seven. Um, let's just hike it up here for a second. Remember this thing? Good old A7 chord. Um, we're just getting warmed up, so stay with me for a little bit. This is A, E, G, C sharp, E, A. You could add your pinky here on second string, eighth fret. So that's a bar chord, A7 bar chord. Added a G. But how do you practice them as a lead guitar player? Um, let's let's just go low for a little bit something like that's a pretty clear way to hear it that's a root third fifth flatted seven a C sharp E G five on the sixth string four on the fifth string E on the fifth string and G on the fourth string Remember, you can take it down low, too. I like that. Kind of, uh, kind of pushes the sound forward. It, to me, that's an energetic couple of notes. Or G leading to A kind of pushes. C sharp and we're uh, expressing that the chord is major not minor if it was minor we'd flat that third but for now we're keeping it major so that's most of the chord all we need is uh, a fifth so see if you can exercise with the root third fifth and flatted seven. While we're at it, let's throw in the big fat E. That's a fifth interval of an A major scale. One, two, three, four, five. That's what we, what we mean by fifth. That right there is a pretty cool group of three notes, E, G, A. That's most of an A7 chord. Those notes are going to sound good if you're soloing or riffing, thinking about an A7 chord. And you can take it up high. That was a C sharp on the ninth fret of the first string. You have to know this. I mean, this may seem kind of boring. Uh, I know a lot of my students will kind of like, oh yeah, I got it. And then I'll say, okay, is it major or minor? Show me a C sharp. They're what? Huh? You have to slow down and repeat this. Until you can do it instinctively without thinking. Not just on A7, but G7, F7, E7, D7, C7, B7, B flat 7, E flat 7. Not just in this position. You have to know it on all 12 keys covering the entire neck in all kinds of weird shapes, so you're not done yet. 
stay with me here. <laughs> this is a major third, the C sharp, part of the chord. The major third is a really good target when you're soloing, like. A bullseye, man, just like boing, you know, <laughs> sounds correct. If you land on, say, like a D, I'm going to do the same lick and land on a, a fourth. That's not a chord tone. A D is a fourth. That's not in the A7 chord. So don't land on that D. Um, what else is not a chord tone? Well, I mean, you know, anything that's not A, C sharp, E, or G is not a chord tone for what we're thinking about. But you can add other things, like a, maybe a ninth or something, or a sixth. You can play the fourth, but don't land on it and emphasize it. It's about what you emphasize, not you can't play any other note. You could add all these... <laughs> I did a chromatic, I did all the notes there. Sounds right just when I hit that major third. Or a seventh. That, that fits with the chord. This will pay off. I think a lot of my students just don't get this. They listen a little bit. They try, hey, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, go check out that other dude on YouTube. I'm like, Okay, you gotta kind of stay with it. And you're gonna find these shapes like. I mean, it makes it effortless when you know these. But again, every any chord, you know, you're not just gonna be playing dominant sevens. There's gonna be minor chords, minor seven, minor ninth, ninth chords, uh, sixth chords, major sevens, diminished, augmented, 13s, suspended 4s, like add 2, sus 2, whatever that is. Um, yeah, you're going to need to know more than just A7. So, like, uh, let's just uh, review this one more time. You got your root 3rd, 5th, flatted 7, root 3rd, that's a 5th on the 2nd string. 5th uh, fret, E, that's part of the chord. There's your flatted seven, e, uh, G on the second string, eighth fret, A, first string, uh, fifth fret. <laughs> There's your major third. There's a fifth. There's a flatted seven. That's kind of fun. Those are all chord tones. Those are all G's, E's, and C sharps, and A's. All right, well, I obviously can't cover every note in this one video, but it's kind of your job is to figure them out. What are all the notes of A7 covering the entire neck? All the way to the top, I'll give you a hint. That's an E, so is that. That's part of a chord, so you got the lowest note on a standard tune guitar and the highest note you can hit within reason with the normal bend E to E plus all the notes in the middle you have to know them on every string if you really want to know your guitar and that's just one chord how many chords are there I think there's a few so once you get this concept you can start expanding into more you know minor minor seventh minor sixth, minor ninth, uh, it, there's quite a few different chord uh, formulas you got to know to be able to express this. So don't freak out. Let's just keep it simple. Let's just stay with A7 for a little bit. When you understand that, maybe jump it up to uh, D7, E7, B7, G7, C7 at your own pace. But try to understand this concept and be ready to move forward cool man thank you for checking out my channel keep rocking